uh, while we believe that uh, uh, in the world we all know that uh, people have uh, striven for justice just, and, and fairness since uh, uh, the very beginning of the time. And um, members of uh, the ancient world historical peoples have never uh, never had to be given a long, explicit instructions on how to tell the differences between the right and wrong. And this knowledge ha was handed down in families and one surrounding. And uh, never has justice been in higher demand than in modern day world, which shows its origins from the world from the past. And uh, we can see that uh, there are more uh, tragedies repeated in the history, as we see in the history. More paradoxical is the fact that even when we are speaking, weapons are being perfected to prevent someone who might wish to submit others from coming into power. Europe was the site of uh, countless events that led to notion and practice of Eurocentrism. This notion can be interpreted in innumerable ways. Western civilization, which encompasses both the U.S. and Europe, is another commonly used phrase. Even though it's true that countries of Western civilization have a centuries-long track record in defining new standards of living, they were at the same time the hub of aggressive colonial undertakings, leaving colonizers better off and bringing suffering submission upon the colonized. These wrongdoings can in no way be justified, even though they were always committed in the name of superior power civilization. By contrast, let's consider an example of the Chinese civilization. In the early 15th century, Admiral Zheng He sailed across many seas and oceans at the helm of a large fleet visiting numerous countries of Asia and Africa. Some claim that he even reached the coast of South America on one of his seven voyages. Many sources suggest that his fleet numbered 70 vessels peopled by 30,000 soldiers. It is a historically established fact that at the time of the powerful Ming Dynasty, Admiral Zheng did not even trade with the countries where he would moor his ships, but exchanged gifts, expressing deep gratitude for the ones he received, such as the rare animals that do not live in China. He never even tried to create colonies, let alone enslave the peoples that distinguished themselves from their hospitality. All this happened before 1489, which stands for the time of Columbus' discovery and the onset of enslaving America, which was carried out, as we know, with three ships. One should not overlook the fact that before the peace of Westphalia, the millennium-long history of state creation saw a huge bulk of issues, disputes, and conflicts between states being resolved in a direct relationship between the two stakeholders, i.e. bilaterally. Only after 30 years of war in Europe in the 17th century did Europe start coming to the realization that it was possible to arrive at the most important solutions with the participation of more states, i.e. multilaterally. A succession of international meetings held ever since has proven that the combined efforts of all states can produce agreements with long-term effects, all with the aim of achieving international peace and cooperation and embarking on more serene times. Let us remember that the Congress of Vienna, the Congress of Berlin, the Paris Peace Conference, and the Potsdam Conference all consecutively proved with a growing conviction the necessity for all international actors to join forces, be they big or small. This was a steady but bloody path to establishment of today's universal organization that brings together virtually all countries in the world and serves as a unique forum uh, to exchange ideas, comments, criticisms, present priorities, and main goals of states, among other things. It was in San Francisco where this materialized in 1945 and can be traced 
the back to the several summit meetings among the three most important allies, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, and the United States. One could even go so far as to claim that the initial idea originated in the meeting between Churchill and Roosevelt in the summer of 1941, when the so-called Atlantic Charter was being adopted before the entry of the U.S. into World War II. Clearly, this would have been impossible had there been no attempts prior to World War II to render functional the League of Nations, the drawbacks of which were carefully studied in order to be overcome completely. Therefore, in the search for justice and justness, the further building of international order as we know it today and the only one in force was made possibly, uh, possible only after the adoption of the Charter of the United Nations by around 50 states and the establishment of the organization. Most importantly, a system was set up to serve as a corrective to the mistakes made. The moral authority of the UN is vital even and when we can differ, this is better than no moral authority at all. No one has the right to undermine the authority and the reputation of the UN. International relations must not be founded upon the politics of force and, um, and diplom diplomacy of weapons. Uh, let us compile a list of the already recorded problems troubling the entire mankind and mention but a few armament and a potential nuclear conflict and this destruction of our nature and of the environment formed through millions of years, climate change caused by human activities only, bad illnesses and pandemics, emergence of a technological innovation threatening to suction the gist of the humanness, the growing social disparities with states, the deepening cavern between the rich and the poor countries, incessant religious conflicts, the survival of ideological clashes, etc. Uh, the question arises as to how these crucial questions must be resolved without the participation of all the UN member states. Uh, to put it simply, there already is a universally accepted organizational framework in place and established the flat platform in contemporary language. Today, almost 80 years after the inception of the UN, one can sense that in certain states, major powers, a lack of patience coupled with nostalgia for the bygone age of unregulated international relations and the wish to reinstate the rule of the richer and consequently stronger. Uh, I'll give you some examples. The U.S. has twice withdrawn from UNESCO, the second time happening around 2017, as it accepted Palestine as a member. Uh, the U.S. founded to be uh, demanding fundamental reform and cut off the financial support for this organization. So far, uh, the U.S. has uh, owed approximately uh, 550 million U.S. dollars in arrears, and this decision was not uh, implemented with consultations with other member states. The U.S. and Germany have reached an agreement to prevent Russia from using the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline as a lever of political power and influence in Europe. The U.S. will not impose sanctions against the Nord Stream 2 AG and its management, and Germany will help jumpstart the Ukrainian energy system. Both sides have committed to take actions against Russia if it attempts to condition Ukraine regarding gas supplies. Should Russia attempt to use energy as a weapon against Ukraine, Germany will take action and uh, at the national level and press for effective measures at the European level, including sanctions, raise a joint statement of the United States and Germany. Ukrainian officials claim that Nord Stream 2 poses a threat to their national security. The, besides, the EU and the U.S. also do not recognize the vaccines coming from China or Russia and refuse to accept foreign nationals that have not received one of the vaccines made in the Western civilization. 
In my opinion, there is no such thing as a universally accepted pattern for valuing everything that states accomplish or simply do today. I should say that there is no one universal guidebook to all our important steps. All, all the most famous books so far, such as Bible and the Quran, could not serve as a pattern for the whole world's actions in all continents. The history has confirmed this, and I think we all understand what I'm talking about. The books mentioned above create uh, most of the existing values, but they do not have such a big uh, influence in countries like Japan and China because they have ancient civilizations completely different from those in Europe. Uh, their priorities, their understanding of life, traditions, and culture in general were completely different from what was predominant in European centers and later in North American ones. This brings us back again to the fact that there is no one holy book in the world to encompass all the variety and beauty of diversity in evidence today. Um, many countries regained their natural place in the United Nations uh, after uh, in the magnificent post-war process of decolonization. Um, this would have been impossible if various liberation movements hadn't received the moral, political, and every other type of support from countries which firmly believe that human justice and human rights should triumph. Without these, there is n uh, no, uh, no possibility that international relations can ever be de uh, democratized. States that hold the belief that they are in possession of all the key recipes for life, which proclaim as universal their understanding of the states, its system of governance, uh, constantly impose these uh, values to others. So this is wrong. As the ancient Latin saying goes, beware of the dons, even those bearing gifts. Their insistence on other peoples to accept their patterns uh, would only push the world into conflicts with uh, immeasurable consequences because it is in the nature of men to defy any imposition. Democracy, i.e. the rule of the people in its original sense, strives to uh, achieve equality among men. From the point of view of international relations, this would signify equality in rights and obligations of the main actors in the international relations, namely states. It is true that today's world is more intertwined and interdependent than ever before. There are numerous examples to support that, one of which I find particularly fascinating. I once read somewhere that uh, there are Indian journalists who uh, write about public utility problems in California. The reason, of course, be, is that the income of these sad journalists relies upon this. Uh, uh, unlike the carrot and the stick uh, principle adopted by the U.S., China has been following the water and rock doctrine. Uh, these two are fundamentally different. Washington has invested a lot uh, uh, in its diplomacy and has maintained enormous army while waging futile wars from Vietnam to Iraq to Afghanistan. China has chosen a different path to boost its international influence, like the power of water. It can flow around obstacles, withdraw and reappear elsewhere, and eventually break or shape the strongest of all the rocks. To regulate the world order uh, by measuring the power of nuclear weapons is to push the mankind to the verge of disaster. Only by building up trust in the system of the UN can we create a successful strategy for our future and for the future of our offsprings. Uh, this is why China's e e global influence is ever-growing, proving that it's a major power that respects the system of the uh, UN. Um, only when all the UN member states are uh, agreeing to adopt the uh, principles in the international laws can we find solutions to problems in front of us that demands our willingness to cooperate and mutual respect and mutual understanding. This is the only winning formula. All other attempts are doomed to fail. Uh, in a true democracy in international relations is possible. 
As I have said before, uh, the UN Charter applies to all aspects of our life, and strict implementation is going to bring the world to an unimaginable height. Uh, no country enjoys any privilege. We should be equal uh, in front of these principles. So the world is still suffering from many troubles, but we believe in a bright future. I am also confident that renouncing hegemony creates a safer future for all peoples and states in the world. I'm also confident that a multipolar world provides a wider democratization than the full focus on one power for this turns into addiction, followed by absolute obedience, slavery, and disappearance. I believe that we all want to avoid these. And at the same time, I believe that development and cooperation would be the only right choices in international relations. Thank you very much.